Welcome to Rome, Italy. This video will take you on a walk from the Spanish steps to the Trevi Fountain while discussing food and reasons to travel. Here's a map of one of Rome's most beautiful walks from the Spanish steps to the Trevi Fountain. It is approximately 650 meters and it'll take about eight to 10 minutes. When you come down from the Spanish steps, hang a left and start walking. We're gonna head to the Trevi Fountain. It's about a 10 minute walk. Kind of a nice walk here. So, uh, I'm gonna talk about food a little bit. That's some more, eh? You know, growing up in Canada, it was all about food, basically it was fuel. You'd sit down at the dinner table, really didn't care about how good it tasted. It was just about fuel for the body in order to get out there, whether you're working. You know, then you come to a, a country like this where you know, food is all about being enjoyed. You know, and I really never had that growing up. So uh, it's kind of new for me to, to sit down and enjoy some food. You know, which reminds me of a couple stories growing up. You know, because growing up, like I said, it was all about fuel and uh, fuel for the body. And it wasn't really about enjoying it. And I, I'm not trying to sit here and say anything bad about my mom's cooking and, you know, when, when she was cooking liver, we were riding our bikes down the street, man, we could smell it. We knew we were having liver for dinner and we weren't really that happy about it. Like I said, we would, uh, when we knew we were having some liver, we could smell it down the street. And I remember growing up and we'd have some Captain Highliner fish and chips. And you know what? I hated fish and chips. Because that was Captain Highliner frozen fish. You'd put it in the oven with some fries. You know, and I really didn't know what fish and chips were supposed to taste like until I went to England. And that's why you travel. You go to different countries, you start to find out what stuff's supposed to taste like. And I remember my first time in England, I was 16 years old, and somebody said, let's go get some fish and chips. And I said, well, I don't like fish and chips until I went and had them. Well, I had some haddock. They rolled it up in the newspaper there. You go to the fish and chip place. Man, and I, I loved it. And uh, it just goes to show that the stuff sometimes you're, you're eating, it's not authentic. So uh, getting to England the first time really taught me it's, it's good to travel and it's good to try food from the, the country that it was made in branch out and that's part of traveling getting to know the food that's why I love this because we are in the country known for its food this is an unbelievable place for the palate like I have tasted so many new things in the last two or three weeks here it just opens up your palate opens it up and uh, you start to really enjoy food instead of just being for fuel you know, and it reminds me of uh, one of the first times I had pizza. Actually, it was uh, my confirmation. I think I was 13 years old, grade 8. And it's one of the sacraments you have when you're a Catholic. And it was a big deal around my house because very uh, strict Catholics. We're going to keep heading down here. And uh, my parents said, you know, you can go anywhere you want. You pick the restaurant. We are gonna take you there. And like we never went out to eat. Never. So this was a big deal. Confirmation. We're gonna go out. Family, we're gonna go out. And I said you can go anywhere you want. And I said, you know what? I wanna go out and I wanna have pizza. We never really had pizza or pasta at home. It was always meat and potatoes, Irish Catholic upbringing. 
I've had potatoes done a thousand different ways. Meat was cooked, well done. You'd be out in the garden after dinner two hours later, picking weeds and you'd still be chewing on that meat. And that's the way I thought everything was supposed to be cooked. Like I've been in Italy here and I've had my first medium piece of meat, my first rare piece of meat in Florence. And I like it. So anyways, we got to, uh, they said, you can go out anywhere you want to eat. Your confirmation, we're going to really rejoice in this. this religious sacrament, being a good Catholic boy. I said, I want to go to pizza. They said, okay, we're going out to get some pizza. It was kind of a really well-known place in my town, in my city growing up. And my grandma even said she was going to come from the farm. She'd never had pizza. She'd never had pasta. Anyways, my grandma shows up at the bus station, comes in from her town. We pick up my grandma from the bus station and we head out to the restaurant. And uh, she said, uh, where are we going? And I said, we're going out to get some pizza for my confirmation. She goes, well, what is that? Italian food? I said, yeah, we're going out for Italian food. So she says, I hope there's some potatoes on the menu. Hope there's something that I can eat. So anyways, we get there, family sitting around, happy that I've continued on with my religious sacraments. Anyways, I, they said, what do you want? And I said, okay, we're gonna get two large pizzas. Half an hour later, after a bunch of talk, these two huge pizzas show up and my grandmother looks at them and says it looks like somebody just vomited on on that plate things were huge and you know she was kind of right it looked like vomit on these big things and then they started to slice them up like they do with that little round thing Chevy Fountain, you come to the end of the road, you come to a busy street, and you hang a right here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna... And it was just so funny to see my my grandmother. I don't know how old she would have been at that time, 60, 65. She always seemed 70 to me anyways. Even when I even when she was 40, she seemed 70. You know when those old people, your old grandparents, they seem old. She said, I look like vomit. Where are the potatoes? Are there any potatoes on the menu? And you know, it, I kind of thought, listen, if you, if you haven't left the farm, if you haven't left your area of the world, how are you supposed to know what this stuff is supposed to taste like? And that's so why I'm so happy that I have the luxury to, to travel and to, to see things. And this one's really about taste and trying food, trying things I wouldn't have the, the chance to have growing up, and to expand and to sit back and not just put fuel in my body, but to, uh, to really enjoy it. And that's what, you know, you look at Italy, it's big in the arts. You look at the paintings, you look at the sculptures, food, care they take you know they all sit down to eat now this is not fast food stuff it takes a long time to prepare it you know tonight we tried uh, a whole bunch of dishes I never would have tried we had some gnocchi with swordfish uh, I've had some wild boar on this trip I've had pizza in the home of pizza in Naples. And uh, like I said, 
That palette there, coming to Italy has been unbelievable just to try the different foods and you got to get to Italy. It is unbelievable for the food. And here we are, just going to come into this. We have arrived at the Trevi Fountain. It only took about 10, 10 minutes to walk from the Spanish Steps. It's a nice, easy walk. We're going to get some video here. Trevi Fountain, unbelievable artwork. It is busy tonight. Look at all the people. It is wall to wall people. That's Amore! Trevi Fountain, Rome, Italy.